Hey everyone, I'm Tifoni, and today let's ramble about the Steve's MS-22. Okay, the disclaimer first, I am once again borrowing this module from my Euro pal Marius, who was ever so kind to lend me it. Once again, I have no affiliation with 3Tom or the Steve that this module refers to. And then disclaimer two, hopefully I'm not in over my head here. Uh, I'm quite intimidated by trying to present a filter of any kind, never mind one that I am going to try and learn on camera here for the first time. So if I blow it, lecture me in the comments. Okay, so 3Tom describes Steve's MS-22 as, quote, a dual-voltage controlled filter inspired by the classic Korg MS-20 filter with an innovative modulation matrix and one of the highest function-to-HP ratios in the land of Eurorack. This module was inspired by many pleasant chats with tech journalist Steve O'Hare. Steve O'Hare? Sorry, Steve. Most importantly, it's a 4HP dual filter in the Eurorack format. And even more importantly, <laughs> it sounds like this. Going through the panel together here for the first time. If I miss anything, please let me know in the comments. But hopefully, we can both learn something along the way. Before, before, before anything else, I think I should show you the patch. So, currently bypassing it, we're just going to use the saw wave from the SSF Zephyr uh, analog oscillator. So, there's nothing this is going into other than a VCA. So that's what this sounds like, and I'm sending it a little sequence from the Oxy-1. So it sounds like this. That's just the oscillator. If we patch in Steve's MS-22, Try and start as clean as possible. So that's pretty clean, but let's go through the panel. As I do, I'm going to read directly from the manual. So we'll start with the jacks. So first is the audio input, which I am running the Zephyr into on this bottom left corner jack. Second is the audio output, which I'm running the audio out of on the bottom right corner jack. What they call FCV, which is uh, the pitch input, so frequency CV input, it's normal to zero volts. The fourth is the auxiliary CV input, which means you can route it to one of the controls. So it's normal to that first input if you don't send anything into it as well. And then we'll go through the knob. So first knob is the low pass filter cutoff frequency offset. There you go, some low pass filter. And then the second knob is the high pass filter frequency offset, or the spread as it's labeled. So as we turn this up, you'll hear that high pass coming in. But then because they're chained, if we turn off that low pass filter, you get that like band passy stuff. But I'll open these back up because the chaining options are going to kind of show us where they're going to affect how this works. So let's get through the knobs first and then I'll go into that part. So right now I've got the low pass all the way open and the spread all the way open as well. So both filters are as wide as they can get. And then the resonance offset. I have this all the way down, but you can bring in resonance and this thing uh, makes lots of mentions of self-oscillating, so it'll do that sort of stuff. And again, that's not what you might associate with resonance, but we'll, we'll get there. So turning the resonance back down just so we can keep a clean signal for now. Uh, 
And then the gain offset, unity gain is at 2 o'clock, which is kind of interesting. So if you also see how these knobs kind of turn, like, if I turn all the way off, it's not, it stops there. So it's kind of like the bottom is where the switches are, if that makes some sense. So if we put the gain at 2 o'clock, that's unity gain. I'm going to leave it at unity. So, yeah, no resonance, unity gain, filters as open as they can be. I believe. And then the second from the bottom is... the ACV input attenuator, so... Uh, I won't do anything right now if I'm not sending at any voltage, but that first input can be attenuated with this knob. And then the bottom knob is the FCV attenuator, and that's kind of, in my mind, confusing because I would think the left <laughs> input should come first and the right should come last, but just to make it clear, they at least have labels on the panel that point to the attenuators, so it's easy to tell which are the inputs, but we'll get to that in a moment. The LEDs above the modulation matrix show you uh, one important thing is that they're bipolar LED indicators, so the LEDs turn red when they're receiving negative voltages, and then green to respond to positive ones. So right now, you'll see these green, uh, as I get into the negative territory, it changes from the positive, changing from the positive voltage that the knob is sending it to negative as I sweep down, and then back to positive. So let's go over the first knob and its switch. So first knob is the frequency. This controls the low pass filter. So in the middle configuration, it's how linked the two filters are if you want to do a bandpass filter where you want uh, both filters to be linked. So right now they're completely independent. So I'll take the high pass filter knob and I will open it all the way. That's the low pass. So low pass is all the way open. High pass is all the way open as well. So right now I'm in the middle, I'm at 0% link, and I can do a low pass filter sweep. And you'll notice if you keep your eye on the lights that the low pass voltage is changing, regular low pass sweep. But if we start to link it, if I put it down to 50%, they're half linked, you'll see that as I sweep the low pass filter, the voltage on the high pass chain filter is changing a little bit. So let's bring in a little bit of that too, so you can see a little more just so that you have both filters moving subtly. And it sounds really nice. But if we want to get a more extreme bandpass effect, we'll bring it up to 100, so they're totally linked. And I'm not tracking volt per octave here, so uh, as I sweep, these are just going to completely go out. If you notice now, though, the LEDs are totally changing at the same time for both the low pass and the high pass. It's because they are totally linked. So we'll come back to this again for sure, and I'll bring this back to 0% link so we can open up our low pass all the way, and our high pass all the way as well. And then I'll bring my resonance back down. And we'll move on to the second knob, which is the spread. In the manual, it's sort of referred to as the high pass filter and the spread, because I guess it's kind of different depending on the mode you're using, right? Right now, where it's completely uh, disconnected from the other knob, it is its own high pass. There's... Like, yeah, it's it's a spread in the sense that uh, it the only thing, or you are creating a distance between the low pass and the high pass filter no matter what, but uh, it is completely independent at the moment from the low pass. So this is what it sounds like. Let's bring up some resonance. Sounds nice. A little nasty. That old uh, subtractive synthesis 101, where they tell you about that I should have paid more attention to, obviously, uh, where they tell you about uh, bringing it to the point of just like getting that resonance to squawk and then roll it back. So that's how that sounds. And its switch, its mod switch, either positive or negative voltages from the aux input. So we'll get to that in a bit, but. If you switch it up, it'll s receive positive voltage from the auxiliary input. If you switch it to the middle, it won't receive any. And 
if you switch it down, it'll receive negative voltage. So we're going to leave that off for now, and I'm going to open the high pass filter all the way back up. And then the resonance knob. So the manual says the resonance and gain behave in the same way. They are both controlled by the sum of the following control voltages. The respective resonance slash gain offset potentiometer, that is resonance and gain, and they just like the just like the spread, the high pass filter knob, they can either take no input from the aux in, or they can take uh, up for positive and down for negative. And I will send that an envelope in a minute just so we can demonstrate all that. But that is how both the resonance and the gain. I oh, know, not very exciting. <laughs> that is how those two work. And then back to those knobs, if I haven't mentioned them already, which I believe I have. These are just 10 inverters for our two inputs, and because we're not sending anything to the inputs right now, it's not going to do a whole lot, but uh, super useful to have those on board. Okay, let's start sending out some envelopes. So the same envelope that's following the quart is going to be doing some modulation on the MS-22. So we're going to hear how that sounds in a second. Let me patch it up. Okay, so this is my patch right now. I'm linking the filters 100% so that they'll be band passy. It's not really tight band pass, but it is in, in a way a band pass. So as I bring in the attenuverter from our filter input, you'll see everything start to move. <laughs> so the modulation matrix is pretty complicated and I might miss some things on here and I hope you'll forgive me but there's some cool things you can do that in like I if I'm routing my aux envelope to the gain I could make this into a VCA right so if I switch my gain all the way down and set its matrix to positive Instant VCA. We'll do Volper Octave Tracking now. Then it gets really nasty with that resonance really quick. slowly. There's our aux input is the envelope, the same one we're using for VCA. So we'll try spread. Let's do positive. So negative will let it open the high pass a little more. Can also have it modulate the resonance. Probably need a slow, long envelope for that one. For the gain um, amplitude boosting, you could probably use that as a VCA if you wanted to shut that off and route it all over to that one. Yeah, actually, you know what? A little. 
little gain modulation actually helps extend the rocket. For my sanity, let's try the pulse wave now. Yeah, that sounds really nice. There is so much routing you can do in 4HP. It's kind of both intimidating but also really powerful because some sweet spots you hit in here are just like really nice. I really like that sound. Uh, let's switch to the Caster and Pollux now. Sorry, I gotta go up an octave. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm Tifoni. That was the MS-22. It is the MS-20 filter in Eurorack in 4HP in an awesome layout. And if that is your sound, if you have more knowledge than I do, you cannot go wrong with that one. All right, thank you for listening. Talk to you soon. Take care.